Hello, AFI Movie Club. This is Greg Gardner talking with you, and I am the cinematographer for Elf. There are so many elements behind Elf, and particularly behind Santa's Village. So it was complex. People call it horse protective. I call it compression shots. There was this little shot where Will's sitting in the potty there, <laughs> and Bob Newhart comes to talk to him at the door. And then right behind that, Will sits on his lap. So we're looking at what was basically the easiest shot of the compression shots and one of the hardest <laughs> back to back. The shot here is the first one we did. Um, if you look at it right now, you can see how it's entirely in focus. See how Will's hand is in focus and Bob Newhart is focused. The back wall is not the one that's way back behind Bob, but the plane between the two actors. So he's supposed to be like he's standing right out at the door, but he's actually probably eight feet away. The trick is, how does the camera not see that? Why can't they tell through the focus element? So the trick is the whole entire shot has to be in focus. The entire shot has to carry focus, we call it. So to get that, you have to put a tremendous amount of light into the scene to stop the camera down and get infinity focus through the whole shot. And then you can never tell where anybody is. There's no depth cues that are given away. So you can't actually tell, but people are on platforms and the camera has to get to a certain height. So our platform merges with the one behind it. Then we're painting, we have to hand paint our floor to match the floor below. And then also you have to light it so that your shadows travel across or you try to light it so that there are no shadows that would suddenly disappear. It would take hours in some cases because of all the lighting. But the reason this one's significant is it was the first one we were doing on set on the shooting day. I knew that it would work 100%, but they were so nervous. <laughs> Producers were so nervous. They made a work print by lunch. They all watched it projected the first morning and everybody applauded like, okay, this works. This is fantastic. <laughs> and off we went. Buddy, I, I think there's something I, I probably should tell you. This is the one that took a little while. Here's Will, he's sitting giant on the legs of Bob Newhart. So the seat on the left, the little table, and the seat that the legs are on that Will's sitting on, those are on their own floor. You can almost make out the floor separation between the floor that's in the back, and that's an elevated floor. And then these seats are scaled down to make Will Ferrell look bigger, the furniture scaled down. But I did the first pass conceptually on how to make this work. And then John fixed it. <laughs> I'm just gonna give, I wanna give him the credit because it was always funny what he came up with. <laughs> I said, what if we, like in the gym, you know, they have those exercise benches and they have the one that inclines down and then you have to do crunches, <laughs> you have to do weight lifts off from all that. So we have our seat as you're looking straight at it, but basically there's a slant board on the back of it and there's a 10 year old boy that's laying on that. And then those are his legs that are coming over the front of the seat. And then Bob Newhart is in a chair that's about eight feet back, because you can see how big Will is and how small Bob is. But what's he sitting on? Because he can't sit on this boy's leg. So my first task, when we did a test, was a bicycle seat. I, like, I don't know, we'll try a bicycle seat, something that hides there. And you couldn't tell anything except for it just didn't look like Will was sitting on his legs. <laughs> and he goes, I just don't buy that. And he goes, you can tell he's sitting on something. And this is why I remember this now, what, 20 years later? <laughs> And John said, he goes, why can't we make like those medieval things with the clamps that they would shackles, they put around people and we'll put them around his legs. And you're looking at him going, what? <laughs> and then he could just sit on those and he wouldn't crush the little boy's legs. And you're like, I guess that works, sort of sleeves. And actually that's the end result. So they went to special, we had special effects and they cut steel tubing and hinged it and clamped it around his legs, right? Pulled the tights over. So that sits on the bench. Right now, you can't tell. And then, of course, it still was kind of lifeless. You could see him sit and the legs would move, but then John started directing the boy's legs to get him to kick and do that funny parts. Now, why did we do all that? <laughs> because we wanted to create the reminiscence, the sensibility of these old movies. And one of the best ways to do it is to just do it in this older style. To be honest, the source material for me was more Darby O'Gill and the Little People, an old Disney movie. The old Disney movies from the 50s, Tom Thumb was a great, which I probably saw as a little kid at a drive-in theater, particularly when he walks down at the end 
through Los Angeles Village, sort of an homage to a shot out of Gabriel Gill. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Bye. The other part that John was so interesting about, he wanted the actors to be able to play off each other. So in other words, I thought, well, okay, that's a good reason to try it. <laughs> but um, it was true. It's like you get these brilliant comedians and Will Ferrell, of course, you never know what he wants to do or what he's going to do. And so the idea was literally to be able to be more spontaneous and just do takes together, even though they weren't standing next to each other, they could play off each other. And in the movies at the time, I think it was music video movies, fast paced. And here we were shooting this very slow paced, <laughs> very saccharine movie. There's no fast dolly moves, there's no anything. You can pan, but you can't boom and you can't slide because you give away the effect. So part of it is you approach these complicated things knowing you're gonna create a mood, you're gonna create a, a tone and think that it's you know going to play and it did in this case, it played great. But so as much as I talk about the light and the focus and all these elements, it's the ultimate purpose of doing it was to create Santa's Village unlike people had seen it, you know, so it didn't feel like a visual effects movie. 